Gentleman yields back and Mr. Collins is recognized for five minutes. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm hearing a lot of passion uh, by the Democrats on the other side about why we are holding what they call a partisan hearing. I guess I, I have uh, three children. I have three grandchildren with a fourth on the way. That's why I'm here. That's why I think this hearing and others like it are important. It's about our children. It's about our grandchildren. And the fact that every dollar of deficit that we, we spend today are dollars that my children, the other children in America, and the grandchildren are going to have to repay. We're not living within our means. I go back to that every single time I cast a vote. It seems as though Democrats, whether it's Zika funding or anything else, or their solution is always the same. Borrow more money that my children and grandchildren have to pay back. You talk about disrespectful. Now that is disrespectful. If we can't pay our way now, what are we doing in, in borrowing on the backs of our children and grandchildren? It's just fundamentally immoral. So here we are, Affordable Care Act. Talk about bait and switch. Talk about false advertising. America, here's this great plan, and here's what it's going to cost. Well, it's costing billions, if not trillions, more than it was supposed to cost. And so when we get into a hearing like this, where the administration has inappropriately put $7 billion, and I'd like to remind the Democrats on the other side where that would go. That would fully fund Zika and rebuild 5,000 bridges in America that have fallen apart at a million dollar a bridge. $7 billion would fully fund Zika. $7 billion on top of that would rebuild 5,000 bridges in America. That's why this hearing matters, to remind the Americans that dollars matter. So, Mr. Miller, here's kind of a rhetorical question for you. If the $7 billion hadn't flowed, into the insurance companies and what we would say was, was beyond the constitutional authority of the administration. Uh, what would have happened to premiums across the ACA? There are a lot of moving parts on that front. If you uh, follow one line of argument that the insurers would still be required uh, to provide these subsidies, so uh, those premiums would be higher. But you've got a lot of moving parts going well, on at the same time. Well, but if we if we stop there, because the the, the uh, uh, CSR is part of the ACA, so they would have to continue to provide them. And if there's not funding, you could argue one way or the other. Premiums go up, and maybe the federal government oh. then would have to to. Uh, uh, the broader answer is by making Congress responsible, as it should be for deciding how to sort that out. There'd be a lot of cross pressures. And we don't sure. know how Congress might decide to subsidize right. and, and, and low income those, individuals sure. differently. And in those cost pressures, we may decide to change some things. Exactly. We may decide to prioritize our children's future. We may decide to prioritize our grandchildren's future. We may decide to prioritize Zika funding. We may decide to prioritize infrastructure repairs. But this administration, in what we would say is an unconstitutional overreach, decided they would set the priorities. And the president said he had the phone and a pen. I don't know that he ever calls anybody, but he sure uses the pen all the time. And so I think that's where this oversight hearing is, is absolutely proper. And I'll just bring up another point that, that uh, and maybe this is a nuance, but we should do it anyway. There's something called the Anti-Deficiency Act. And under the Anti-Deficiency Act, Congress can sue an individual, an individual who misappropriates government funding without an appropriation request. It's got to be an individual. And this administration has continued to refuse to put anyone's name on the line that was involved in what we would say was an illegal decision making. And, and would just ask you, sir, if, if that's a proper interpretation. If we don't have a name, we can't sue someone under the Anti-Deficiency Act appropriated money. That's correct, because the way it applies, you have to have an accountable official, and that is a little bit of a mysterious uh, effort right now. And we have been attempting to get some names. We can't get names. So I guess we'll hold hearings. We'll invite the secretary in. She refuses to come in. I guess, I guess that's her right. I don't know. Maybe we can get her in here another way. But those are those little nuances that do matter. I believe they matter quite a lot. But I'll go back and just say, it, this is about my children and grandchildren. It's about respecting the taxpayers, 
That's why this hearing's occurring. We respect the taxpayers of the United States of America and future generations who will be robbed of the opportunity to live the American dream that we grew up in because they're going to be so saddled with debt. The debate will become the debate we're seeing today in Venezuela, in Greece, and Puerto Rico, and I yield back the balance of my time.